Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host between Taramina and Oriented Intelligence. I'd like to welcome those on a local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on OAA Now. A lot to look at this week here. Obviously, the... Um, you know, you look at, we've had a lot of basketball news. Um, we got a breakdown. Obviously, um, we got um, a new coach over at Rochester. Um, we also got a um, some coaching vacancies, of course, now at Bloomfield Hills and now at um, Troy Athens. I mean, I can confirm both of them. So let's look at our main story here, obviously, is all the basketball turnover. Um, obviously, um, you really look at, um, we're going to go with girls basketball first here. Um with Kristen Massey stepping down at Bloomfield Hills. Um, you know, she did a really nice job taking over for Coach Jeff Rubin. And you really look at what she's done. Um, you know, she's really turned that team into like a um she's turned that team into like a um into a contender. I mean, obviously what she's done was she turned that team, you know, la I mean like Last last season, um, you know, I mean, like early on, it was rougher. It was really, really rough for her. Um, five and twenty-seven in their first two years taking over that program. So you could tell the direction where that program was um, under Massey, where you know from when she took over for Coach Jeff Rubin, that program was in a really, really dark place. I mean, it really was. Um, don't get me wrong. I mean, it was a, it was in a really dark place and then take, and then taking over the program, um, was, um, and then taking over the program, she, um, and then things started to turn around for her. Um, things really started to turn around for Massey. Um, you know, and then her final two years, you know, she went 32 and 14, um, 32 and 14 in her final two years. So. You know, you kind of look at the record that, you know what I mean, the record that she's had from the first two years of taking over that program where she was 5-27 and 27 to finishing up 32-14. and 14. That's a big turnaround for Bloomfield Hills. That is a big, big turnaround. And for Massey, obviously winning the division title, um, the blue title, I think that was the first in Bloomfield Hills of school history. She won a district championship this season. Um, you know, of course, and then she shared the white crown with Seaholm. Um, you know, so this program has been a team that's been on the rise under Massey's watch, especially in the last two years. You know what I mean? It's resulted in some, in, um, mounted in some success. And you really look at the job she's done. I mean, obviously you look at a player like, um, you know, look at the players that Bloomberg Hills lost. I mean, you really look at, of course, um, you know, obviously, the system Massey likes to go with B. I mean, like, I mean, like interior. Obviously, when you look at the play, like Ruby Smith. Obviously, what she's done. Um, and then you look at um, the others. I mean, like Brianna Young has been a player to really watch for. Brianna Brooks has been another player. Um, so when you really look at the job she's done um, at Bloomby Hills, I mean. It's been incredible. I mean, she's built the program strength up. She's built the team back up. Um, I mean, they've done a really nice job building that program. So you really look at the situation now um, with Bloomfield Hills. I mean, like it kind of really looks at is can this team take the next step without Ma without Coach Massey? I mean, that's going to be the challenge and. And that's going to be a really interesting challenge is can Bloomfield Hills, you know, make the next step, build on that challenge, um, and then we'll go from there. So I really think with the Blackhawks, um, you know, I, I really think with them, it's going to come down to is can, um, can Bloomfield Hills um, make that next step without Coach Kristen Massey. And I think that's going to be the key to really watch for. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how um, Bloomfield Hills goes at this, um, how they look at this. 
Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how um, Bloomfield Hills, you know what I mean, goes with their coaching search. Um, do they go in house? Um, I really think what's best for them is to go in house. Um, and I think that would be something to really watch for is if they go in house, um, that'll be a big, big, um, that'll be a huge deal. I mean, if they can go in house with their, um, coaching search, um, basically, you know, when I look at them, basically, um, you know, if that's going to be the key for them going forward, is can this team, you know, take the next step, um, without, their coach. And I think that's going to be the, the challenge I, I see with Bloomfield Hills is can this team really find a way to make that next step? Because if they do, I think this is going to be a very dangerous team. If not, then there could be some trouble. And I think with Bloomfield Hills, um, you know, going forward, um, we're going to see what happens with them. We're going to really, really see what happens with the Blackhawks. But, you know, for Coach Kristen Massey, um, she's done a really good job with the team, especially in her last two years, going 32 and 14. Um, they were knocked out in the regional semifinals by Stony Creek in the um, Elrat Macomb, Dakota. Um, in that game, you know what I mean? It kind of like in the first time those two teams played, um, you know, that was a really tight game. Um, Blue Bay Hills ended up falling in that one by one, by two points. Um, and then the next game, um, you know, in the regional semifinals, Sarah LaPrairie had a really big game for, um, Stony Creek and it showed in their, um, regional semifinal, um, win for Stony Creek over Bloomfield Hills. So a lot to look at, a lot, a pro lot to be proud of for Bloomfield Hills. Um, curious to see the direction that they go. I think they're going to stay in house. I think that's probably going to be the best case for them is, can this team, you know what I mean, make the next step with a new coach? And I think that'll be something to really watch for. Is an assistant over there at Bloomfield Hills that could get it? I mean, like, it'll be very interesting to see. I mean, like, you know, what direction they go. And I think it'll be something to really, really watch for is can they make the next step? And I think that's going to be the challenge for um, Bloomfield Hills going forward, especially with the girls' basketball program, especially with where they've been, especially when Jeff Rubin left. Um you know, and then Massey, of course, he wasn't the um, original coach. Um, they had another coach in place, but he had to step down. And then Massey took over, and she did a really great job with that program. Um, she did a really, really great job with that program. And I think at the end of the day here, um, you got to give credit where credit's due. And she's, I mean, like Coach Massey's done a really, really nice job building that program at Bloomby Hill. So whoever takes over that program is going to have a, a program that's ready to go. And I think um, for that, for them, the challenge for them is going to be being the white next year. Um, obviously you got Harper Woods in there. Actually, no, take it back. You got Royal Oak, you got Rochester, you got, um, you know, you got um, Grove, Seahome um, are both in there. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, and I mentioned Royal Oak as well. So it'll be interesting to see how this team will look. Um, especially with the challenges that is ahead of them. So we'll see what happens. We're going to see what happens with Bluefield Hills. And I think that'll be a team uh, that'll be a team to really watch for going forward is how will Bluefield Hills do, um, you know, how their coaching search is going to look. And there's a lot of questions. So we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see what happens, who takes over there. Um, I don't know if they have a coach in place yet or if, um, or they haven't, you know, so I have not heard a lot, um, considering what's been going on over there at Bloomfield Hills. So we'll see what happens. Um, let's go now, of course, um, to the Groves situation. We talked about this a couple weeks ago, Allison Heidi stepped down at Groves. Um, she is now the new head coach at Lavonia Stevenson and Groves will also have a new athletic director. Um, taking over. His name is Ross um, Gauthier. Um, don't know much about him. Um, he'll take over for Coach Tom. He'll take over for Athletic Director Tom Flynn, who is retiring. Um, he'll be um, it'll be effective on June 30th. So I will be curious to see 
who names the new girls basketball coach? Is it is it Flynn or is it Gauthier? I mean, like, that is the big question I have with Groves is, you know, when it comes to the search, obviously you look at Groves as um, the coaching job over there. I mean, it's a, it's not a bad, it's, it's a good job. I mean, you really look at it. Um, you kind of look at, um, you know, the players there. I mean, like, great school, great community. Um, it'll be interesting to see how, um, how Groves does, um, you know, especially with the new athletic director over there. Um, you know, but I will be curious to see how he will do over there. And I think that's something to really, really watch for is, you know, how will he take the program? Um, obviously you look at the coaches in place over there. You got Brennan Flaherty coaching football. You got Mark West coaching boys basketball. Um, you don't know who's coaching yet at um for girls basketball. Um, this is a program that's had great coaches, you know, and then obviously under the legendary um athletic directorship in Tom Flynn, we know what he's done for the OAA. Um, so there's a lot to really, you know, look at with the accomplishments of Coach Tom Flynn of Athletic Director Tom Flynn, um, who will be retiring. At the end of June, um, so it'll be interesting to see how things go, um, you know, next season, next year, um, over at Groves, and you know, obviously, you know, with with um, you know, with the athletic directing change, I mean, obviously, it's going to be interesting to see how um, you know, how this is going to go. So we'll see what happens um, when it comes to um the athletic directorship over at Groves. Um, and it looks like it's a good hire. I heard there was over a hundred candidates for the job. Um, obviously, you know, Groves where they're located um, in Beverly Hills. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how, um, you know, whoever, you know what I mean? So I'll be curious to see how, um, especially the girls basketball search, who names the coach there? Is it Flynn? Is it, um, is it Russ? I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, or is it Ross? I mean, I don't know. I mean, Ross got the, I don't know who names the coach. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how that goes. So we'll see. I mean, we'll see. Um, staying in girls basketball. I mean, Rochester's got a new girls basketball coach. Um, Andrew Toppy is his new, is the new coach at Rochester. Um, takes over coach Bill Thurston. Um, my thoughts on this was it's interesting because Toppy was an assistant under under Coach Bill Thurston. Um, obviously, you know what I mean. You look at you know you look at the job that Thurston's done at Rochester. Um, he did a remarkable job over there. Um, he turned that program. You know, obviously, you know with Rochester, they struggled early on. He built that program. Um, to where it's been. I mean, they won a district title um, two years ago. Um, got the regional sem the regional semifinals. Um, they've had a history of falling in the district final. Um, you know, in the past, I mean, they ended up. I mean, they fall in the district final. They fell in the district final. I think the last six, the last seven years. Um, so, Toppy takes over the program where. It's interesting to see how Rochester does this because, you know, he's, I don't think Toppy's had basketball coaching experience. I, mean, I know he was a, a coach at the sub varsity level. I know he was an assistant under Thurston. Um, so this one, it's an interesting one. I mean, last season, Rochester took a step back. They won nine games. Um, fell in the district final to Stony Creek, 37-32. They knocked off Romeo, who was the number two seed in their district. Um, and that's a credit where credit's due. Um, you know, so when I look at this hire, um, I would view Toppy as a safe hire because, because you really look at it here, you don't really need to change much with him because he's been in the program. Um... He knows the stuff the girls like to do. Um, you know, obviously, 
the challenge for 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 Toppy's gonna be is how will he put his stuff into the into the with the girls? Um, obviously with the transition period, the transition period has to happen during the season. You know, it can't happen during the early early parts of the um. It can't happen during the early parts of the season where um you know what I mean where um you know, where everything just goes smooth, quick, and quick, and quick, you know what I mean? It's got to be a slow process, and that's the challenge that I think that that Toppy has ahead of him. Other one is you got two very good players coming back in Kylie Robinson and Alice Max. Um, those are two really dangerous players. Max, we know what she can do. She can shoot you threes. She can, she can go inside. She can rebound. She, she basically a complete package. And Kylie Robinson missed um early missed all tw- missed some of twenty twenty three. I know she had some soccer commitments, and you know she came back had a really nice year for Rochester. But the thing with Rochester, and I think this is going to be the challenge for the Falcons, is can Rochester handle? The situation, obviously, with the guard situation. You do have Lucy Cook coming back. You do have Lucy Cook, we know, as an athlete. We know what she's done in track and field. She is one of the best distance runners in the state. Um, You do return Erica Proctor. You do have Angela Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky's more of a three. Um, You know, and then you have Robinson and Max. You know what I mean? So... And then you have Emma Max coming up from the JV program. Guard play is going to be the key for Rochester because you have, and I forgot to mention Troy on here. I mean, like I owe in the um on the um you know in the Bloopy Hill segment, so I do owe Colt fans an apology for that. But back to Rochester. Um, I think when you look at Rochester's issues. You do have, I don't know if he'll retain Jeff Haney as a JV coach. It would be interesting if he did. Um, but he's been around that system. So whether it's been the boys game or in the girls game. Um, so it's it's interesting to see how, how he does, how he brings the transition period um, in the fold for Rochester. Because you really look at Rochester right now. I mean, like, they went, they had a rough year. I mean, they had a really, really rough year finishing last in the red. Um, forced, I mean, like, having to go down from the red to the white. I mean, I know a lot of people in Rochester were not happy about that. Um, but you look at the white, you, you have a, you're in a division with Bloompia Hills, who's an up-and-coming team, but they're looking for a new coach. Um, Groves, kind of the same thing. They're looking for a new coach. Um, Seaholm, we know, is going to be very good next year for Coach Chris Manchester. Troy, we know, is going to be very good next year for Coach um, for Coach Laura Guzman. And then Royal Oak, obviously, you know, their defense first, the mentality under Coach Brian Zapata. Um, Royal Oak had an incredible year this year getting to the um, regional finals after knocking off Warren Cousineau and also upsetting, and in my opinion, upsetting Gross Point North. So it'll be interesting to see how um, how um, the direction, you know, of where this program is going to go at Rochester. Now, I know there is some proven talent in the pipeline over there. And I think there's some question marks, um, you know, with Rochester heading into the next season. Now, do I think Rochester is the favorite in the white next year? I don't think so because I think Seaholm is going to be a tough, tall task for them. Rochester played Royal Oak last year, and they end up losing to the, they end up losing to them um, at Rocha, at Royal Oak last year. Um, and then we know how good Troy is, especially. With the emergence of um, with the emergence of um, you know of that young core 
having another year of experience, um, you know, when you look at Troy. So it'll be interesting to see how um, this division is going to look, but it's also going to be very interesting to see how this team is going to look. Um, when you look at Rochester, um, there's a lot of question marks with the Falcons um, going forward when I look at Rochester. So that's a team that I think has to, I will be curious to see how this team does considering um, where that they've been at. Um, they had a struggle, had a real big struggle last year. Um, so when I look at Rochester, um, the transition period is going to be the key. The, um, the, um, you know, can Toppy, you know, get on the same page with Alice Max and Kylie Robinson? Can Rochester develop guard play? I mean, that's the key for Rochester is can this team develop guard play? Can Toppy get on the same page with Max and Robinson? Um, so those are the question marks that I have with Rochester coming in the next season is, can everybody get on the same page? Um, I think the toppy hire is a safe hire. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see how the program will look under toppy. Um, but, you know, it kind of looks like the same um, characteristics of, a, of um, Thurston are still there um, over at Rochester. So really, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know what I mean? Like needing a different voice. And that's pretty much what... Um, it's looking like more and more like over at Rochester. So it'll be very interesting to see how this happen, what happens, see what happens. So we'll see what happens um, with Rochester, obviously with Coach Toppy taking over the program. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how um, Rochester does heading into the next season. So it'll be interesting. So we'll see what happens there at Rochester. Now let's go to the boys. Um, the boys game here. Dave Scott steps down at Troy Athens. Um, this was confirmed on um, on X, according to Stephen Bell. Um, he coached. He's, he took over for Coach Bill Gerby in um, 20, um, 2011. Um, he went 147 and 158 in his 14 years coaching the program. Um, his best year came in 2014 when he won a district title. Um, he fell to Clarkson in the regional semifinal. Um, that was the best year for Coach Dave Scott. He's coached a long time over at Troy Athens. I mean, he's done a really good job at Troy Athens. I mean, like, you know, t taking over a program, you know what I mean, that was really successful under Coach Bill Gerby. Um, I think, you know, when you look at the Red Hawks, the, um, what Dave Scott's done, I mean, like, He's had years where they look really good. And then there's he's had years where they haven't looked good. And Troy Athens, you know, they're one of those programs, obviously, you look at. I mean, they're always going to be in games. They are going to be in games because their defense, their scrappiness, um, they have a – and I know Scott has earned the reputation um, three-point happies. And Troy Athens, we have – well known for years <laughs> for years this team has been known as the three point happies so when I look at Troy Athens and you look at them and say okay um, we're going to shoot I mean we're going to shoot at least 5, 6 threes a night you know what I mean we're going to shoot at least 15, 16 threes a game I mean a night you know what I mean we're not going to make them all the time um, and to coach at a gym, which is one of the smallest in the entire league. I mean, obviously, you look at Troy Athens' rims. They're one of the smallest in the league. But what he's done at Troy Athens has been remarkable. He's done a really good job since taking over for Coach Bill Gerby. Um, he's built program strength over there at Troy Athens. He's built, um, he's built a culture over there at Troy Athens. You know, you kind of see... You see, like, you know, during games where they have the young um young children, um, the young kids, um, going on to the um going on to the court for um for um pregame. I mean, like, you know, just being being on the um being on the um out of bounds line. Um, 
You know, I, I, I honestly thought people say, well, Dan Feist started that at Clarkston. But I kind of felt Dave Scott really started that at Troy Athens. So, you know, you really look at the job he's done. I mean, he's done a m remarkable job over there at Troy Athens. I mean, like, obviously, I know the reason why he stepped. Obviously, because of family. Um, you know, and obviously, I know, um, I know the, um, I know Coach Scott's children pretty well. Um, but when you look at, um, the job that he's done at Troy Athens, um, he's always supporting the red and gold. He always supports, supported the red and gold. So it'll be very interesting to see, um, what the direction Troy Athens goes. I mean, this was a team this year that went four last year, went 14 to nine. Um, they were tied for second in the white with Lake Orion. Um. They ended up falling at home to Troy, um, arch rival Troy, 63-58. Um, so when I look at the Red Hawks, who they got coming back, um, Nathan Piggott um, is going to be a, a player to really know about with Troy Athens. The reason why I say this is because you look at, I know he's been getting a lot of love for football. He's been getting a lot of love. But he's also a pretty solid basketball player. So when I look at Piggott, you know, he's also had, I think he had the winning buzzer beater against Stony Creek earlier in the season um, where he made, a, he made a tough layup to win the game for him, to win that game. Um, so when I look at the um, Red Ox, um, yeah, Piggott's going to be the key for um, Troy Athens next season. He's the key. To everything for Troy Athens when you look at it. I mean, obviously you've got some proven players as well. Liam Dempsey's a solid player. Um, he could play guard, he could play, he could play in the wing, he could play in the post. Um, Nate Appledorn's another one. Um, Brennan Tucker's another one. Alec Tabouian. Um, a couple of these kids were J V kids playing the five quarter rule last year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how these um these proven players will um handle the new coach. I mean, like, now here's the question for Troy Athens. Do they go in-house? Do they go in-house? Because there is a possibility that they could go out of the, out of the box. And that would be interesting if they did. Um, because I think when you look at Troy Athens, um, the, um, the Red Hawks, they don't really need a culture change. They really don't need that culture change, if they get a culture change in there, I'd be really shocked because Troy Athens, they don't need, you know, they, I mean, they don't need like a coach that could just go and like change everything up and start over from scratch. I mean, like that would be just, that would be just rough if that happened. So it's going to be a challenge for them if um, they go that, that route. If they go that route and start everything over, then that's not good when you look at what Troy has. That's not good. And I think it'll be interesting to see if if, if they go in-house, um, you know, then I think it would be much easier for the players because they're familiar with the system. They're familiar with, um, you know, but whoever takes over that job, you know, they're going to have a really, really quick turnaround. Because you look at, you know, especially with the start of summer ball coming up, you know, and Troy Adams in a really tough spot because now you're going to have an interim coach there um, getting ready for summer ball. Um, you don't know. And for that person, you know, they don't know if they're going to be the permanent guy yet. I mean, they just, or the girl. I mean, like, you don't know. So you don't know if they're going to be the permanent coach yet or not. I mean, you're just the interim coach, you know what I mean? So, you know, so that's the challenge that Troy Athens has this summer is can this program get a coach in there real quick because the start of summer ball is coming up. And obviously, you look at the start of summer ball, that is a, I mean, that's going to be something to really, really watch for. I mean, Troy Athens is a team that, you know, they're going to be in the white next year. They're going to need a big summer 
considering the division that they're in. When you look at teams like like Oak Park, you look at Farmington, you got Lake Orion, you got you know, you got I mean like you got Seahome. I mean Seahome, um, we know what they can do. Um, but I still think the the um the and then you have Troy in there, your arch rival. Obviously you look at what Troy's got. I mean, they do return Mason Parker. That's a big, you know, the emergence of Andrew Lake. So you look at what Troy, Troy has had Troy at this number lately because when you look at the Red Ox, you know, it's, they've, I mean, like, they've had, I mean, like, they've had it rough against them. I mean, that's really been the key is, you know, so when you look at the, the top teams in the white next year, Obviously, you got Oak Park, Farmington, Lake Orion, and Troy. Um, don't, and then we're not counting Harper Woods here. You know, we're not counting out. Um, you know, so it'll be interesting to see how um, how Troy Athens does, um, how they respond. Um, you know, whoever takes over that program um, is going to have some big shoes to fill with Coach Scott no longer there. And, you know, it'll be something to see. I mean, it'll be something to see. I mean, will will Troy, um, you know, will Troy Athens, I mean, like, um, you know, take the next step? I mean, that's the big question. I mean, your freshman program wasn't bad. Your JV program wasn't bad. Um, so there's a lot of questions when I look at Troy Athens, and I think there is going to be a lot of them is we're going to be watching Troy Athens carefully um, when it comes to coaching search. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, we haven't, I haven't heard anything much over at Seahome um, considering the boys' basketball gig. Um, I've been hearing a lot of rumblings. I can't verify or confirm yet. But, you know, so, but I've been hearing a lot going on over at Seahome when it comes to their coaching search. So, We'll see what happens. I mean, we will see what happens um, with them. So it'll be interesting to see um, how things go, um, you know, for Troy Athens. So it'll be something to really watch for. Um, this weekend, let's go to track and field a little bit here. Um, we got um, we got league meet this weekend. Um, we got we're gonna preview both the um. the red um the red white meet that'll be over at Oxford over at Adams and then. The um, and then you have the blue gold meet. That one's going to be over at um, I think that's going to be at um West Bloomfield. So it'll be really interesting to see how this goes. Um, so when I look at the boys' side of things, obviously, you know Oak Park will be favored in this, and the boys' side, um, they're loaded in the, in, in the hurdle events. They're low in the four hundred meters. They're loaded, you know. I mean, like, obviously, they have the pieces to have another. But West Bloomfield's a player in this as well. So when I look at the blue-white meet, the uh, blue-gold meet, um, Oak Park, West Bloomfield, Groves is your wild card, I think, in this one here. I think Groves the way that they are. Um, I really think that, you know, when you're looking at this meet, um, in the boys' side, I have to give an edge here to um to West Bloomfield. And here's why I'm going to say West Bloomfield. The Lakers, they have balance. The question I have for West Bloomfield is their distance. I mean, you look at a team like Royal Oak who could be a player in this. Berkeley maybe could be a player. Seahome, you know, could be a player. Um... But when I look at, you know, you look at Farmington, who is a predominantly heavy sprint team, they will have distance as well. Oak Park, we know how good they are. Um, and then there's West Bloomfield. West Bloomfield has home track. That matters in a meet like this. It matters. Because you look at what West Bloomfield has. They got speed. They're athletic. And they're talented. So when I look at this matchup here, and I'm looking at all the projections early on, West Bluebeard's got the hurdles. Oak Park's got relays. 
I think Oak Park and West Bloomby could be really interesting. I really think they could be really interesting. Um, Oak Park, Oak Park, you know, is going to be the favorite in the release. They're going to be the favorite in, in, in four by one, four by two, four by four. Um, Ferndale could be a sleeper. They could surprise some people. They're four by eight solid. Their distance crew is good. Um, their cross country coach. I mean, their coach, their track coach is of course the boys basketball coach. And the cross country coach and the athletic director, that's Juan Rickman. And we know how good of a coach he's been. I mean, Juan Rickman's one of the best in the um I think he I think he he's gonna be key. He'll be key. Um Groves will be favored in the um four by four. Um and then obviously in the field events, um Groves is favored there. West Bloomfield will be in there. Um I think this is where where Groves can do their damages in the field events. But so will West Bloomfield. I think they're going to do some damage as well. Um, but I think field events, Groves and West Bloomfield, this is where I think this could be, this could be where the meat gets decided, could be in the field events. Um, obviously, with West Bloomfield, I think I think West Bloomfield's got a little bit more balance than Oak Park does. Um, Farmington, I think that'll be tight. Um, so I think it'll be really interesting to see how um how that one goes. And it'll be interesting to see. Um, I think home track matters in this meet. And I think it's gonna be interesting to see how um how each team does. I mean, home track will decide, you know what I mean? It could decide it, you know. So we'll see what happens. Um, on the girls' side. You got to give Oak Park the favorite, obviously, with the, with the experience they got. But West Bloomby could give them problems. I mean, you could have run like Cameron Tatum. Um, Cameron Tatum, she's scary. She's a scary athlete. I mean, only a sophomore. I mean, and London James, only a freshman. That says something right there. I know Oak Park's got Nevaeh Burns, but Cameron Tatum... What she's done in her two years at West Bloomfield, it's just absolutely insane. I mean, she's already part of Lakers history. I mean, that says something. Really does. And I think West Bloomfield's got a great chance to knock off Oak Park because of Cameron Tatum. Even though Oak Park's going to counter with, Nat, with Nevaeh Burns, in both in the in the two hundred, the four hundred, and even the relays. I mean, yet I mean, Oak Park's got Kylie King. They got their distance. I mean, their their mid distance is very good. I mean, they got Kylie King there. Um, and then obviously you look at um, you know, but it's gonna come down to, and Oak Park is just dominant dominating the hurdles this year. They've been dominating the hurdles. Um. For West Bloomfield, the key against them is they cannot get beat in the relays or the hurdles. That is the key. Or at least place with them. <laughs> because if they don't, and if Oak Park gets those points in those in just that one event, you know, that's game over. That's seriously game over. I mean, especially with what Oak Park's got. West Bloomfield, um, I think it's going to come down to West Bloomfield and Oak Park. It's going to come down to both those teams. I mean, Oak Park's done a really nice job in the relays. They've done a really, really nice job in all the relays. I mean, can, that's the key. Is can, is can, um, is can Oak Park, is can West Bloomfield find a way to score in other way, other areas. I mean, they're gonna have to go. They're gonna have to go other ways. I mean, like when you look at distance, maybe field events is gonna be key. Um, I mean, field events is key for um for West Bloomfield if they want to compete with Oak Park. Um, do I see another team that could give them problems? Maybe. Um, but when I look at the when I look at everything here on paper, 
it all points out that Oak Park could be well on the way to winning a league championship. But West Bloomfield really is the team that stands out. Um, the Lakers are a team that really stands out in this. So that's the key for West Bloomfield, is they've got to get points elsewhere. Because if they don't, they're, they're done. I mean, because Oak Park will just literally eat them alive. And they will literally eat them alive in, um, in the sprints and in the, in the sprint relays and in the hurdles. And then will you look at maybe could there be another team that could really do some damage? I mean, Farmington maybe. Seahole maybe. Um, but when I look at the, um, the league meet, um, this weekend over at, um, West Bloomfield, on the girls' side of things, it's going to come down to either West Bloomfield or Oak Park. So, that's going to be the key area, and I think that's going to be the one where I think if, if, for, for West Bloomfield, they've got to get points elsewhere, um, especially in your distance, which is, distance has not been... West Bloomfield's M.O., but that might be an area where they might have to get points. And I think they got a great chance to do that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how um, to see how um, that goes. And I think that'll be the key is, can West Bloomfield get points um, elsewhere? Because if not, Oak Park, you know, is going to load up those, load up, especially the sprints and the hurdles. Um, they probably gonna have the top four girls in hurdles in both events. If you think about getting those points right there, I mean, like, you know, you go like 10, 8, 6, 4, you know what I mean? That's about nearly almost 30 points right there. So if Oak Park were to take like the top four in both boys and girls and, uh, and um, girls hurdles, both events, that's 30 points. They already had 60 points. So West Bloom is going to have their hands full. And I think it's the two. I think it's gonna come down to Oak Park or West Bloomfield. So we'll see how we'll see what happens there. And I think it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. So we'll see how it goes. Um, let's go now to the red white meet. Um, this will be taking place over at Adams. Um, of course, all the red and all the white will be here. Um, the boys. I just don't know if anybody can touch Rochester Adams right now. And the reason why I say this, look at how good that team is. Look at how good Coach Eric Lohr's got that team rolling right now. They just went and destroyed Lake Orion, a proven track program, proven track powerhouse. And they just went and destroyed Lake Orion 101 to 27. I guess Lake Orion's got injuries, but that's just mind boggling. You know what I mean? What happened there in that meet? I mean, Adams has got proven athletes everywhere. Got sprinters. They got distance. They got field events. I mean, Adams, they're a scary group. <laughs> they're a scary group. I don't know if I see anybody really threatening Adams for a few reasons. One, it's on their home track. Everything's familiar with them. The surroundings are familiar with them. Two, you know, the way that they've done against everybody in the league, they've been dominant. They really haven't lost the beat. You know, you look at last year's team, that team was special. That team was special. Winning a regional title. And they have a great chance to do it again. Now, they're going to say, well, we got to get by Oak Park. True. But I think they're more well balanced than Oak Park is. So when I look at Adams, they could be a serious, serious threat. Not only in the, um, not only in the league meet, also in the regional, where that's at Rochester this year. They don't have to really travel that far. Um, 
Adam, and then maybe in the States. I mean, like, let's not forget this Adam's team had a lot of experience a year ago, but also this was still a very young track team. I mean, they got balance. They got balance. And Coach Lore's done a really nice job with that balance. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how Adams does, but that Adams team, they're scary. They're a scary group. Now, a team that could threaten them, maybe Clarkston. I don't trust Troy. Um, I think, you know, but I just don't know if I see anybody in the red or in the white. Touching Adams in this meet. I, I just don't know if I see it. I'd be shocked if somebody did. I would be very shocked if somebody did. But I just don't see it. I honestly don't see it. And then on the girls' side, you look at in that girls' side, Rochester is a Rochester. You got to put Rochester in there. I think the girls' side is going to be more competitive than the boys' side. For several reasons. Because you got teams in there that can compete. You look at Rochester. They're going to be the favorite. They have distance. They have some sprinting. You have a very good field. You have, your field events are solid. You have a good thrower in a, in a Mendoza. She's very good. I mean, you really look at, and then you look at, um, you look at the other teams. You look at Lake Orion. Lake Orion, when healthy, is really dangerous. I mean, you look at what the Dragons have done. Last week, they won the Oxford Invitational. I mean, they're starting to get their act together. They got proven runners on that team. If they get the field events together, then trust me, I think this is a very dangerous team that Coach Andrew McDonald's got. Lake Orion could be a scary team. They're a contender in this. Then you look at Adams. Adams gave Lake Orion everything they could handle. That meet was 69-59. That kind of tells you how close that meet was. But Adams is a player. And then you got Troy. Troy. They're not bad. They're not a bad team. So when I look at the... And then you got Clarkston. Clarkston looks like they're back. They look like they're back. So when I look at when I look at the teams that are competing in the red, white, and the girls' side, I think it's gonna come down to is Ken Rochester's the favorite. And there's a good reason why they're fa they're favored. Because Rochester has everything. They have sprints, they have distance. You have field events. They got balance this year. And obviously the key, I think, is Grace Mendoza. And then you look for, and the throws over there. And then you look at on the other side, you got Lake Orion. If Lake Orion, they're, they're, they're very young. They're young. And you look at the job that Andrew McDonald's done with that young girls team this year. He's done a wonderful, he's done a magnificent job with that team. Then there's Clarkston. Clarkston could be scary. They could be scary. And then there's Adams. Adams could make some noise. Seriously, they could make some noise this year. They could make some noise in this league meet. And then, and then of course, I mean like, so when I and then when you look at the white, um, I don't know if I see Stoney being a player. I don't know if Bloopy Hills be a player. Um, but you know I think it's gonna 
I mean, Athens, they could be a player. I forgot to mention Athens in the boys' side. Um, we know how good they are in the mid-distance. So, and then there's Troy. I mean, Troy, we know, has been very, very good in the, um, on the girls' side for a long time. So, when I look at this here, it's going to come down to, I think this, I think the girls' side is going to be really tight. I think it's going to be really tight. So, that's what it's going to come down to, is, I think the girls' side of things, it's going to be really, really tight. And I think for sure when I look at it here, Rochester has to be the favorite, but Lake Orion's definitely a player. Lake Orion's definitely a player. I think that's what it's going to come down to. And then Royal Oak is in the red. Royal Oak is in the white. I did not know that. Royal Oak is in the white. So now this makes this more interesting. Because now Royal Oak is in here. And that's interesting. Because Royal Oak is a dangerous team. They're a top team to beat. And especially in the distance. Royal Oak is a scary team. They are really scary. And I think it's going to come down to his Ken. So when I look at it here, it's going to come down to his Ken. Um, Royal Oak is a dark horse to win this meet. But I think you got Rochester, Lake Orion, um, Clarkston, and Adams are scary teams. They're scary teams because of what they got. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how this one goes. Because if they don't, they're in trouble. But we'll see how it goes. So, we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. So, all right, buddy, all right. Um, before I am signing off here, we got some baseball stuff to talk about. We got some softball stuff to talk about here. Um, baseball, still think West Bloom is still a team to beat. Softball, I think it's going to come down to his can. Um, softball is going to come down to his can. Um, is Ken West Bluefield, um, the softball's going to come down to us, is Lake Orion and Stony Creek. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens going forward. Lacrosse, um, Lake Orion ended up beating Clarkston. Um, that was big. Um, good win for the Dragons. Um, so, we'll see what happens. I mean, we're going to see what happens going forward. Um, It'll be interesting to see how things go as we end the final stretch of the season. Um, we're in the heart of May. It's graduation season. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, I'm signing off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OAA. Um, make sure you um, we'll keep an eye on the situations over at Sea Home, Troy Athens, um, Oxford for the girls um, for their basketball coaching gigs. So. We'll see what happens going forward. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week. Take care and see you later. God bless. And see you all next week. God bless. And see you all next week.